Here we go. Hello and welcome to what's new in Windows Whistler 2276, the worst one script. Hello and welcome to what's new in Windows 10 technical preview. Now this is going to be slightly different to the Whistler videos if you've been watching those because if we look at the size of the disk, which is what I used to sort of guide what's new in each version, then you can see the Whistler ones have been about a meg to one and a half megabytes and they've been about an hour long. And the changes for 8.1 to 10 comes in at a stonking six megabytes. So that'll be, that'll take about six hours and I ain't got enough time for that. So yeah, what I'm going to do instead is just show you some of the hidden stuff that you may not have seen. So first things first, I'm going to start with some of the more obvious changes. First, if we open up PC settings. Now, everybody in the world, I think, who's interested in this sort of stuff has seen the preview builds feature and when it's all full on like this because of the registry entries, so I'm not going to bother talking about that. But what people may not have seen is this Windows Update TH option. Now, unfortunately, this is just a lot of dummy UI. It's not really downloading updates, and there's obviously no updates to select because these are all the same thing. As you can see, it's just a bit of a dummy UI. I, well, I presume it's for some sort of new Windows update service for Threshold, which is what the TV stands for. TV, TH. But yeah, I don't really know what it's for. As you can see, it's just loads of mock UI, and pressing details crashes it. So don't do that if you enable it. Oh, oh yeah, I've got to tell you, I have to enable it, haven't I? Yeah. So if you go to Reg Edit, then eventually, what you need to ooh, that keys for later on. What you need to do is go to H key local. No, it's not H key. It's A key current user software Microsoft Windows current version. And then if you go down to Windows Update, you need to create a key under there called UX. And then you need to put a value called is MUS UX enabled, make it D word value and set it to one. Then if you restart PC settings, you will get that new option, which is under update and recovery. And you can play around with that all you want. If you tick that, it sets say, something in the registry, but it doesn't really it doesn't really affect anything because download doesn't do anything and you can also view your update history which is just one of the lot of mock UI and also these launch um, Internet Explorer to Bing so you don't, there's no really need to click on those just to prove it also some of them crash it as well which will just happen there so yeah that's the first new thing I wanted to show Another thing you may have noticed when I was just showing that there is that if I scroll down to the bottom you see there's a samples option on the bottom. Now what's that and how do you enable it? Well that's a bit more finicky to enable because it's not a registry setting, it's something directly in the code of Shell32. So what you need to do, it, well actually I'll show you what it is first, it, that's the wrong one. It's going well isn't it? It's actually at the top of all these settings here. There's a big list of settings and how they're determined in Shell32. And it's the code for the system settings, obviously. And the one we're after and interested in is this is unit test host here. Now, originally it's just set to this function here called isam device, but that's just a misnomer because it's just a conglomeration of every function in the code which takes a boolean and returns null, I mean false even. So that's just a conglomerate, it's not really asking if it's an ARM device to determine whether it's on, it's just whatever function they used was compressed into just one function by the compiler and it shows the ARM device name. So yeah, what you need to do is either, you can either change this 0 to a 1 by hex editing, but since that obviously um, determines whether it's an ARM device and loads of other settings that really aren't required, that really aren't of interest to us and would probably mess things up. What you can do is change the this function pointer here, is arm device, and change it into this return true one here, which just as its name says, just always returns true. So to do that, what you need to do is back up shell32. You need to get it out of 
Windows 10 first because you can't update it if it's been used. So you need to get it out of Windows 10 to update it. And then what you oh, don't need that. Then what you need to do is I'll show you the differences between the now what you need to do is go to off get a hex editor first, obviously, and then go to offset two A five eight C B and then if you change the forty that's at that the byte the value of the byte at that address is 40, you need to change it to 20 which changes it from this function which as you can see here ends in 40 and points it to this function which starts at 20 and then when you do that and you insert it, I don't know if system file checker still exists I mean I'm not really au fair with Windows 8 and 8.1 and all than the really new stuff because I've been really following along so I don't really care about them that much to be honest so yeah, I don't know if that still exists, but it didn't seem to bother me, so I just just copied it over Shell32 and then booted it up. And then you go to PC settings, and the samples option appears, and it's called View Model Samples, and you get just loads of UI testing samples. So this one actually works, this autoplay one, so that's not a sample, that one actually does things. But all the rest of them seem to not be. It's like that advanced settings crashes it, so don't click that. <laughs> And it's quite a long thing. There's obviously toggles there. Which one says toggles with progress, but there's no progress. It's to progress uh, circles there, so... And you can see this bit doesn't update with what language you've installed. This button doesn't have anything in it. So, and clicking it crashes. It's quite a good mock UI, this isn't it? It just crashes all the time. Yeah, there's a flyout sample, and flyouts are those things. And there's a sky drive flyout sample, it's just the same thing. Uh, I don't know if these buttons work. Yeah, they do. Cancel. <laughs> don't fix my computer, you get rid of all this stuff. Yep, as you can see, all, there's all the notification settings. I don't know what this preview bit's for, it's just a big empty gap before there's a this box with nothing in it. This doesn't work, I tried this earlier, that doesn't work. And then you can see this is like the com controls thing I used in my early Whistler videos if you saw that, but it's just obviously the WinRT controls. <laughs> oh, it didn't quite fit on though. Oh. And we've got the fonts thing. And yeah, that's it. There's a lot of text on the bottom. Woo! Show us a length of piece of text. <laughs> but yeah, that's all that's new with that, and that's all of that. The mock UI doesn't end there. Oh, you best believe it. But to get it to appear this time, this new stuff, you need something which can show you the running windows on the system. Now I use Pi++, there's other ones. I don't know the name of any, but I'm sure there's other ones. And what you need to do is find the window that's called Shell Tray Wind, which is the tray on the bottom. Then when you found the window handle for that, you need to open, you need to something which can send window messages. So your tool which finds the windows might be able to do it. Pi++ can't. So I wrote my own. Then what you need to do is when you're sending the message, you need to send it to that window handle. So in this case it's 1050, it'll probably be different on your system. Then you need to send a message 507, that's in hex, so that's OX 507, not just 507. You can convert it to decimal yourself. Then you need to send WPRAM convert anything, so that's the next number. And WPRAM has to be 1. Now if you send that, you get this salmon coloured splodge on the bottom. Now it doesn't do anything. Like I'm clicking like mad, but nothing's happening. You can't drag it anywhere, you can right click on it. Well you can, but it just gives you the standard uh, menu. So yeah, I don't exactly know what it's meant to be, or what it's meant to be used for. I don't know what it's called though, because if you refresh the windows, which are available, there's a new 
one under. I lost it. Was it gone? There it is. There'll be a new one under here. And here it is. It's called MS People Band Window Class. So it's called the People Band, and indeed in the code it's called the People Band. And as you can see, the one on the right is called the Add button. So I presume that's meant to, when it's all working, that's meant to add, I don't know, people to it. I don't know. And then on the other side, there's the Perl Window Class. Now Perl is the same window class as what this is here. That's also called the Perl. So I don't quite know if there's going to be another one there that does something else or whatever but yeah as you can see I don't know much about it because this is literally all the code there is for it it displays it and there's some code to query some registry parameters and if I show you the registry and we go to Amanda Explorer no so you need to go to Microsoft Windows current version then you need Explorer and then it's people band, I've called it people band too, just so it doesn't pick up the settings. But yeah, you can see there's one for there's a, a registry entry to add the button, that's the one on that side, so if that's zero, that'll what be there. There's one to add the pearl, which is the one on the left, if that's, not, if that's zero, that won't be there. There's also one to make it have a transparent background, now that's off right now, so if I turn it on, and make that make the settings be picked up. And what you need to do to turn it off is send the same message but make help ram zero. That'll turn it off. And as you can see it the message it returns the number of times it's been turned on. So when I turn it on again it will return three. Yep, as you can see now it's all gone transparent. It's still not not any more functional. It's just it can be turned changed from its salmon coloured appearance to a more do all the same colour as the taskbar. So yeah, that's a hidden thing in this build that's... I don't know what purpose it serves, I'm sure it'll come apparent in the final version of Windows 10 or the next technical release, if there's going to be one, I don't know. But yeah, that's the the people band. Now that's not all for stuff hidden in Explorer, if we look into its resources, and particularly the bundle of strings known as number 428, and you open it up, then you get Welcome to Windows Short Update 2. We've added many new features like the Start Menu, so there's no doubt now that the Start Menu was going to be in Windows 8.1 Update 2, but they obviously jumped that and jumped straight to Windows 10. And there's a URL, now if you go, go to this URL, if I can copy it properly, then what you get is the boring old what's new in Windows 8.1 update page. Now this is all corresponds to the update 1. So there's nothing about update 2 in here or the start menu or anything like that. But you can see at the end of the URL they add it, um, there's a where it's come from, I don't know what OSID stands for but it's probably where it's come from. It says Windows 8 client welcome Windows 8.1 version 2. So obviously they were gearing up for version 2 enough to have the URL scouted on their website. I tried looking at some of those numbers after that on the... These link IDs here, because they're like sequential numbers to links into Microsoft's website. So I tried like fuzzing it a bit and going up to... I think it went up to 398900. But there was nothing else to do with Windows 8.1 Update 2 or Windows 10. So I won't bother you with that. But yeah, it's just a standard page and it mentions Windows 8.1 update 2 on the end, so they were getting they were probably really close to releasing that, but obviously they didn't in the end. There's one other fun thing in Explorer which shows that somebody at Microsoft, and I'd like to think of it as Raymond Train, was getting down with the kids. And that's this message name here. It says NSC invalidate itself for reals with a Z on the end of it. Obviously somebody's getting into street slang at Microsoft and putting a bit of personality into the operating system. Something that's kind of missing. And as you can see it's just a Windows message. They register it. Oh, it's a bit off the screen. There you go. And NSC stands for Namespace Control, it's just something on the desktop. So it's not really anything it's not anything hidden or secret or anything, it's just thought that was a bit of fun somebody was injecting into Windows there. 
Everyone else is kind of getting it. It's probably heavy at the moment, but there's one other curiosity I wanted to show off. Obviously, if you go to properties and get the taskbar properties, you get this, which is familiar. People with multiple displays will have another bit down here. But that's not the thing I wanted to mention. If you go to the resources and look at dialog number six and open it, then you can see that's pretty much that. That window, and here's the multiple taskbar bit that I don't have because I don't have multiple displays. But that's pretty much that dialog. Now if you go to 7, which is the one obviously underneath that, then you get what seems to be exactly the same thing. And if I put these side by side and eventually work, then you can see they're pretty much exactly the same except this one, number 7, has this show windows store apps on the taskbar option. And this one doesn't. Now, I looked in the code for Explorer, obviously, and it's hard-coded, at least the Enterprise version I looked at is, it's hard-coded to use this number 7 one, which is the one on the right here, and it's hard-coded to use that one, and 6 doesn't get a look in it, so I don't quite know why there's two versions of it, and that's the show Windows Store Apps thing is the only difference. I presume that appears on here when you have the start page, the start screen set instead of start menu. I don't know, because I haven't tried that yet. My doing sensor. So yeah, I don't quite know why there's two different versions of that dialogue, with the checkbox being different, considering when, as you can see here, they just um, hide all the bits of the dialogue that don't matter anyway, so that's a strange curiosity I noticed. Now there's one other aspect of, well it's not really Explorer, it's in T Win UI, and it's the alt tab window, and also the task view can modify these with some registry settings and just to show it if I click on one of these woo, see all the way disappeared yours will do that yours will just slightly indent a bit but mine goes all the way down to zero and what causes that is we'll find out where they are again it's in HK current user again it's in software Microsoft Windows current version Explorer and then you go down to this multitasking view here and you'll need to create alt tab view host that's for the alt tab one, as you can see mine goes much darker in the background than yours does. And that's because this, due to this dimming layer underscore percent option. And there's also one called all up view, which is the task view, I don't know why it's called all up view, but there you go. And the one that controls that is called thumbnail mouse down shrink percent. You can even make it bigger if you make it like 200, that would make it twice as big. Just to show, oh, that's going to make it quite a lot bigger <laughs> because we're going to get 500% bigger. Here we go. Let's have a look. Whoa, yeah, that completely broke everything. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, to show, to see all the other options you can possibly set, you need something like Procmon or Regmon, and you need to look. At, well, you need to look at Explorer, and then you need to obviously put in the path as. as containing all look view, so it'll just because Explorer queries the registry a lot. And then what happens is when you click on that obviously you saw that well you didn't see that but lots of these options were requested. You see there's quite a lot of them. There's actually quite a lot of them. You go you can change the desktop high, the dimming layer, which parts of it get dimmed the wallpaper. Now I don't know if these were in 8.1 update 1 because I haven't looked at that like thoroughly but, well at all actually I haven't even installed it but these were all new strings that went in 8. Point, the base 8.1 so I presume these were, this is a new setting. With the name of these things I presume they're meant to be set from the UI since there's some other things which are which are set have similar names and they're set from the um, like PC settings and stuff like that and personalization but I couldn't find anywhere where these are set because T Win UI is the only place that contains these strings so yeah there's pretty much the same ones apply to alt tab the alt tab view if you just change that to alt 
tab. If you want to um, look at all these things, you can pause the video. No, not now. <laughs> yep, you can pause the video and then you can look at them in your own leisure time. Yeah, if you open Alt Tab, then mm, nothing happened when it happened. Mm. I probably didn't type it in right. It's alt Tab, yeah, it's Alt Tab View Host. Mm. Long Term Watchers, well, no, this is something I suffer with quite a lot. <laughs> Typing in the wrong thing. And there we go. You can see there's different values. You can change the grid which is where the windows are positioned obviously the thumbnails you can make the um what am I about what was which one was it this icon plate that's where the the top of the window where the where it says registry editor and the icon is that's the the plate so you can change the size of that you can yeah you can change well, you can see all of these desktop, you can change the desktop background as well the color of it if you can change the picture, but you can change the color of it. End scale and new button. I don't know what this new button means. Because you can't really create new windows from Alt Tab, can you? And you can't create new desktops, so that's something to investigate. Hang on a minute, I'll investigate. Right, I've done a little bit of investigation, it turns out they're just left over from the from querying this for what makes the add a desktop button here that they just left over from that so they don't actually do anything on the alt tab view which is kind of a disappointment there we are there's something else new we've just seen by doing that and it's this add a desktop button now virtual desktops are obviously new to this windows 10 preview but they're not actually that new to windows in general now, if we look at my big massive database of stuff that functions Windows have has ever exported. It will search for create desktop and it's in user 32. And if we look at every OS that's ever been, every 32 bit OS anyway, then you can see there's been a function called create desktop in pretty much every version of 32 bit windows. I mean, it was in NT 3.1, as you can see here, and it was in 95 and 98 ME, and obviously all the way up to the modern day. There's also been different versions of it Create Desktop X and Create Desktop W. Now, in Windows NT 3.1, I tried using it to see if we could create some virtual desktops, but it doesn't quite work as it should do, and I don't have a 3.5 or 3.51 VM. But I do have a Windows NT4 VM, so I can show you that this obviously isn't anything really that new. Now obviously there's no GUI for it in here, or we'd already know about it and be using it. So, but you can create code to call the function and obviously um, create them and switch between them. So as I have done here, so if I create a desktop, there you go. Nothing else happened because it's obviously a different desktop to this one. So you have to go switch to desk one. And here we are, our second virtual desktop. No command windows open. And it's a completely brand new separate instance of Explorer. I do need the command window back on though so I can get back. So it's in share. And the original one is always called default because that's a Windows convention. And as you can see, they are very definitely two separate desktops, and they are very definitely separate and desktops. So yeah, you can see there's no window on this one, so it's definitely different. And you can switch between them all you want to. So virtual desktops isn't really anything new. The only difference really between this function that's always been in Windows and the one that is in Windows 10 is that in Windows 10 they're not actually separate objects because desktops are a pretty much a kernel managed resource and they're separate to each other so as I think you can do on here I don't think I don't know can you switch tick windows between desktops I don't know if you can do that or not I don't know how you do it if you can do it 
Well, I guess no. So I don't know. How you, I don't know how you do that, or if you can do it. But definitely with the old technology, which I've just shown you, you can't do that because they're separate objects, and the windows only exist on one desktop or another desktop, and they're completely separate things. So if anything's like set a keyboard hook or a keylogger, so you can so it's like testing anything you type. If you go to a separate desktop, then as long as you don't run the same thing that installed the keylogger, then it won't actually register because it, oh, they're separate securable objects. Now it's not really anything new if you've ever logged into Windows 7 and you probably have done then you click on your username don't you when you're signing in it's in the middle and you set your password and then it fades out and shows you the actual desktop. Well that that thing where you type in your username and stuff that's another desktop so you always you were always using these different desktops you just didn't really know it and that's the WinLog on desktop, so it's a completely different and separate thing. So that's why it's kind of hard to send messages to it from your code because it's a different desktop and all stuff like that. But yeah, I thought I'd just have a little experiment here, just to show this is completely different technology to the virtual ones by the task view. I've just copied the desks tool to. Let's make sure it's working. Yep. Just copy the desk tool to this Windows 10 and I'll create a desktop. And I guessed it worked. So if I switch to it now, there you can see it's completely separate. There's no icons or anything. And on the task view, it doesn't actually work. So so it completely is a separate technology. The actual window, the start button doesn't work, so I'm pretty much stuck on this desktop now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going well, has it? Yeah, the start button isn't working on this new desktop, so maybe they sacrificed the old technology for the new technology. But whatever they did, it's got me stranded here. Help! Okay, I managed to get Task Manager running, but we can see this t old technology really has been manked up because trying to run command line, it doesn't actually run it. Well, it does run it because it's running, it's just not on this desktop where I can use it. And Alt Tab obviously isn't working, like the task view, and pretty much any Explorer feature isn't working. So I don't know if that's just because I've done something wrong in the code to initialize the desktop, which is specifically needed for Windows 10. But anyway, if I try from Process Explorer, that might shed some light on what's happening. Nope, even that's not appearing on this desktop, so I'm pretty much hosed. Maybe if I kill. So, yeah, this is going to need a reboot because it's not working at all. So, the old technology and the new technology haven't actually meshed that well, have they? So, let's see if I can remember what it is. Shut down slash R. Slash T0. And it's player crashes on exit. I've set up a little demo here to show quite what's happening. I've created a desktop and I'm going to switch to it and then five seconds later switch back just to show you. Now this desktop here has the command processor quite large and in charge. So if I switch and then I click on the task view button and then leave it, you can see it affects the first desktop. So this is obviously, I, well I presume this is obviously because the virtual desktops send messages between the explorer instances or it's just or something like that and then when you create on a second desktop it's sending the message to the first the main explorer and then it's acting out that on there i think anyway that's what i'd guess is happening so the virtual desktop technology is mixing with the actual desktop technology and it's creating stuff that's a bit broken but then again this is what these releases are all about isn't it trying to fix stuff that's broken and find it out and all that. The last few things I want to talk about are some test modes which you can enable via the registry. Now obviously with this being like a testing build there's going to be some test modes and indeed they are. And the first one which we've already seen is this XAML key. If you rename that to just XAML it's HK Local Machine Software Microsoft XAML. Then there's a bunch, of, none of these are actually here and neither is the key so you'll have to create the key and these values. I don't know what half of them do, so 
like that one, I have no idea what that does. And either that one, I don't know that some of them cause the apps to like go mental in CPU usage. Like if you turn on this decomp animations, then when you search for something in Explorer, because this is an XAML window, when you search for this, um, Explorer goes mental in CPU usage. So just something to be wary of. But the things that are most interesting are these, this framework counter, and the redraw re regions and the overdraw heat map. So if we, obviously we've renamed it, so it doesn't work in Explorer unless you restart Explorer because it queries them on startup. But if we use a window which is quite, it's just a bit easier to start and shut down. If we use this one, as you can see, there you go, we've got a frame rate counter in the top right hand corner. That always sticks at 64 and 0, so I don't know, well it always sticks at 64. Don't quite know why. And the one on top of the notifications window always sticks at zero, so I don't quite know what they are. But anyway, as you saw then, with it going a bit mental with the colours, this it, these are the redraw regions which are being updated underneath. So if you enable redraw regions, and then you say bung task manager underneath it, then and if you bring task manager underneath it, then when you scroll up and down. On these things to initiate the redraw of the elements then it colors in the bit of the XML window where there's been some redrawing underneath. I don't quite know what this is useful for because if your stuff that's underneath getting redrawn is pretty much nothing is it? I mean you just do your own drawing anyway so not quite sure why that's such a thing but yeah that brings you, gives you the disco mode as I call it. Another thing, which you can turn on, is this overdraw heat map. Now, if I enable that and restart notification, then now you can see it's pretty much just a translucent window. And they're always red when you turn this on. And as you can see, up near the top, there's where the notification text would be, which says no new notifications, and that's a slightly darker red. And up here on the top, there's like three different shades of red. There's the original background color. There's this other one where the counter would be. And then there's the bit where it would say notifications. So this enables you probably to see how well how stacked your elements are on top of each other. Because you probably don't want things on top of each other to, because they'd like occlude the thing underneath. So I think that this is what it's for. So it's called redraw regions. No, it's not. It's called overdraw heat map. So obviously this would show up where you're doing quite a lot of overdrawing on the same bit, and you can probably sort it out by using this. I think anyway, makes sense to me. So yeah, obviously if you put them both on at the same time, then you get the true disco mode, where you get the thing, and it changes colour when you overdraw underneath it, so yeah, I like that. But yeah, I just thought that was something that was worthy of showing off. There's another test mode that's not strictly new, in that it was in some pre-release versions of Windows 8.1. Whether it stayed to 8.1 or it was removed and has made a return, I don't know. But it's the SkyDrive pages test. Now, if you set this SkyDrive test value to 1, you have to create these keys and this, these values. If you set that to 1, then instead of actually going and looking up on your SkyDrive, which this, comp this virtual machine can't because it's not connected to the internet, but what it does, instead of this going to check your account, what it does is it uses these registry keys to fill in the details on here. So, the maximum the where is it total size becomes this number here obviously the total size of your sky drive and file size backup size and other size are all added together and they become the first number the usage of it and these other values here error state that changes some messages so if you you don't have to restart the settings app you just have to go out and come back in again there you go if you set that it says your OneDrive is almost full please buy more storage 
if it's 8 to 2. You get, whoa, your 15.9 exabytes over your storage limit. I don't quite know how it calculates 15.9, but it does. And there you are, it's just a test for this. You can change what message you get if you play around with disabled state and error state. Then you can change which me error messages you get or which status messages you get. There you go, it also changes the number of. I don't quite know how it all correlates together, but it does actually change the messages. And if you set disabled state, then when you click on buy more storage, it goes, we can't talk to OneDrive right now. So it doesn't work. And also, since this is just a test, that doesn't actually work. This doesn't work because it's 800 by 600, but it doesn't work anyway. <laughs> when you're in this test mode, you can turn it on because that does that. That's, this one still does work. and changes the default but yeah the rest of it's just a test and it doesn't actually work or do anything but one last odd thing I wanted to mention before I let you get on with your life is in the resources of the UI ribbon it's a separate DLL it's not the UI ribbon it's UI ribbon res DLL now there's a lot of new images we just scroll down past all the changed ones there's a lot of new bitmaps now these are strange because if we open them up, so if we get UI ribbon res, and then we want 14, well let's take the biggest one, 14, 49, and that one, then you can see it's pretty much just, well it's just like different coloured blobs. So if we open up another one. That's also, well, that's got a slight pattern to it. And some other ones. There you can see that's just another, like, coloured boxes. And there's more slightly shapely blobs. But yeah, you can see there's like a pattern here. They're just all sort of. I don't know what they're meant to be, especially like this one and that one. They're just like. Bo coloured boxes. At first I thought this was due to my thing that views these was buggy, but I dumped the, the raw binary of them and uh, appended the bitmap file header and opened them in paint and they looked exactly the same, so I'm not really quite sure what these are meant for. I could guess maybe that this is like um, the green means don't show this bit and the orange means show this bit so that you could like highlight something as you're going down a list or something like that, I don't know. That's just a guess though, and then like, they change that as, uh, I don't know. But anyway, I just thought these sort of blobs were interesting. <laughs> I mean, that's the only way I can describe them. I don't know really what they're for or anything. If we look further down the list, say 1471. They seems just green blobs there, I mean. Yeah, I'm just flummoxed by it. I just saw these and I thought, what, what's all this about? But yeah, that's just um, the last thing I want to say, so thank you for watching this video, if you're still here. And I will see the people who aren't interested in Windows 10 in the next Whistler video, which will be 2276. And for everybody else, I will see you probably next time when Windows 10 actually does come out. Bye!